Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm broadcasting to you from beautiful, sunny Budapest here this Saturday. I hope everybody is doing fantastic. Uh, today, we are looking at uh, IELTS speaking part two for this class. Next class will be the reading section. And uh, this class is for members. It's one of the perks. Members get to request uh, classes uh, and uh, have uh, several uh, members chat only classes each week. They also get access to our six full practice exams. The next class will be for everyone. The materials come from our websites, aehelp.com, for the academic uh, version of the exam. And uh, for general, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. Hi, Amrit. Hi, Paula. Good to see some members uh, joining in on the class. Uh, again, do check out our websites when you have a moment. Uh, it's worth spending a couple dollars to save yourself headache and stress about the exam. Uh, click that big red button to join there at aehelp.com or click this big red button to join at g-i-e-l-t-s help.com and you can use the code liv20 for a 20 percent discount if you have questions comments concerns about our products or about the ielts don't be shy send me an email adrian a-d-r-i-a-n at aehelp.com all right hi alexander hi hong good to see some more members in class. Haung, am I pronouncing your name right these days? I wrote it down and I practiced it a couple times. I just want to make sure that it's at least somewhat accurate. Is it Haung? H-A-U-N-G? Haung? Oh, perfect. Thank you. All right. So um, for this week, uh, we are finishing up again with today, speaking part two and reading. Uh, no class on uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then I will be back Wednesday with uh, speaking part one. Hi, Ferdovs. Hi, Patricio. All right. Um, so, uh, again, members, we will focus on a fresh new uh, part two cue card uh, speaking question. It's really important that you practice part two at home regularly. It's not every day that we have to uh, talk for two minutes on a specific topic. So it takes practice and it's good practice. Public speaking, especially in English, is always great practice. Um, there is a, uh, an international organization that focuses on public speaking and it's free. Uh, there are chapters in most countries. Uh, does anybody know what that organization or that club is again there's an international club where you can practice your public speaking in english even um, and it exists in most countries anybody know what that club is what is that club you should check it out if it's if you have one in your area you can maybe join i don't know if they do much online i haven't investigated myself but there is a very famous public speaking club that's found in most countries. Anybody? Uh, it's not Meetup, Paula, that I'm thinking of. I'm not too familiar with that. Could be a different one. This one has been around for a long time, even well before uh, the internet. That club, and again, it just, it, you know, uh, always thinking of tools to help students. And I think this one is definitely one that could help a lot of students. Even if you're a high level student, it could be uh, great to advance your skills even more. No, nope, it's not the ICC. So um, international uh, public speaking club. And it's like I say, it's free uh, to join and to go. It's called Toastmasters. Look at that, even uh, Microsoft Word recognizes that as an official word. It doesn't underline it. It's called a Toastmaster, Toastmasters. Everybody, uh, anybody here of Toastmasters? It's a good one, check it out. Okay, um, <clears throat> by the way, a Toastmaster 
is a person who gives a toast at the beginning of a meal or meeting, raising their glass of wine. Okay, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar uh, with uh, toast mastering or doing a toast, uh, but uh, when you have friends or family or a group of businessmen and uh, you're sitting for a meal and then you raise your cup and you say, hi everyone, I'd like to get your attention. I would like to make a toast to the celebrated couple of the evening, to a happy marriage and a long life filled with many adventures and excitement. Uh, so that's a toast, okay? The name of that, what I just did, that little speech um, that's given at the beginning of a meal, usually with a glass of wine, a chin chin, or a kam pai, or an egeshe gadre, or a salut, a million ways to do it, cheers in English. Um, that's toasting. You're toasting um, and you're giving a little speech. So that's where this club gets its name from, Toastmasters. So check it out when you have some time. It's a great place for practicing speaking skills, especially public speaking and giving speeches. Okay, That will help you with part two for the IELTS. Guarantee it. Okay. All right, so let's get to our question for today. Any questions about that, members? You're just kind of quiet in the chat listening to me. Is that clear what toast is and what Toastmasters is all about? They also help people to overcome um, their uh, shyness uh, or their lack of confidence. So it's great for that as well. Thank you, Amrit, Vish, for Doves, Paula, Patricio, for confirming. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead with this. So here is our part two cue card. So you're doing well in part one of the speaking. You answered the questions, used the grammar of the questions, gave complete answers with explanations, examples. And now the examiner says, okay, that is the end of part one. Now we will continue with uh, part two. Uh, thank you, Rahul. <laughs> Um, for part two, here's a card with some questions. Do not turn that over. Here's some note paper. Here's a pencil. Uh, you will have one minute to look at the questions. Think about your answer. You may take notes if you wish, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Are you ready to begin? That's where you should say, yes, I'm ready to go. All right. Uh, so you turn over the card. And this is what you see. Talk about a time you surprised another person. You should say who it was, where did it happen, why did you surprise them, how did they feel about it. You will have one to two minutes to talk about this topic. Okay, fantastic. Now, right away, so you took five seconds, ten seconds to read those questions, okay, carefully, paid attention. What is your first step? What are you doing? Always your first step. Always, always. What do I do? Immediately. I need to realize or recognize an important fact, which is, ah, very good. Uh, Patricio says, I think you're talking about an event. Yeah, Paula says, recognize the topic. Yeah, this one's kind of interesting because uh, at first glance, it might seem like you're talking about a person. And you kind of are because you're talking about a person who you surprised uh, or whom you surprised. Uh, but in fact, you're uh, mostly talking about an event. Absolutely. So I'm very happy, uh, Patricio. Uh, and Vish and Paula, that you recognize that this is an event. It's not so much a person. Fantastic. Um, so first, you recognize I'm talking about an event. 
Sure. And when you talk about an event, what details do you need to include? So what are immediately, as you start to think about your response, what you should say, uh, what key pieces of information do you need to include when talking about an event? Okay, immediately. You need to think about this. This is how you can create a solid two-minute response. Uh, so time, yep, yeah, when it took place, very good, yep. Yeah. Uh, location, yeah, absolutely, where it took place, okay. Uh, who was there, yeah, absolutely, so the attendees. Yep, yeah, the people that were there. So time, location, attendees, what else? There's a couple more really important ones, okay. Uh, reason, sure, you can think about that as well. So reason for the event, so the purpose of the event. Yeah, absolutely, that's a good one, Rahul. Um, we will, Vish, look at the specifics of the surprise, but before that, um, there is one other one, and it's interesting how often students forget this one. Uh, Paula says feelings, yeah, so how you felt about it, sure, but there's even one more that is very important. Um, and I don't see it. I'm looking at the chat to see if I maybe missed it, but I really don't see anybody uh, naming this. Uh, before we get at the specifics, members, so before we even look at the reaction or the accomplice or anything like that, um, there's another important point that you have to consider when you're talking about an event, and I really don't see it. Uh, so remember this for the future, uh, activities, okay? It's interesting, it's, it's one that students often ignore when they're talking about an event, when it's um, of primary importance. So the activities, okay? What actually uh, happened at the event? So beyond you simply surprising the person, what were people doing? Were they eating food? Were they dancing, telling stories, uh, sharing adventures? So what were the activities? Uh, that that took place at this event. Uh, it's actually quite surprising for me how often students forget that detail uh, in uh, these responses. So it's very important. Keep that in mind. Okay, um, great. So what do I do next? Okay, so number two, it's very important. What do I do? What do I do? Before I start thinking uh, in great detail and, you know, of course, don't rush. So one minute, it's enough time. 60 seconds is enough time to strategically think and come up with some good answers. Yeah, Haung, very good. So Amrit, take a look at Haung. So Haung says, think of two or three events um, and then choose the best one from that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So think of two to three events. Okay, yeah, I'm really, I really want to basically encode your thinking uh, to go through this process nice and fast uh, when you're doing this. So uh, think of two or three events and then wisely choose the best and easiest one to talk about. Um, so uh, the question here is why wisely? So what do I mean by wisely? Um, and uh, at this point, members, what are some events? So what are different types of events where it is common to uh, surprise another person? So what comes to mind right away? What is, what is quick logical thinking here? Okay, so think of a couple. Okay, a surprise visit, sure. Okay, what would be another one? Um, surprise visit, surprise uh, at a wedding, sure, that's possible. I think perhaps the most common one uh, Rahul just put up, which is a surprise birthday party, yeah. Uh, 
Any others that come to mind? So surprising uh, visits. Okay, there we go. Rehan, very good. So a uh, surprise anniversary. Yeah, that's a very good one. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and uh, if you are at that stage in your life, and you, uh, especially if you're a man in most cases, um, if you've uh, surprised your partner by asking for a hand in marriage, right? So that one could work very well um, if uh, you have experience with that. So, um, does anybody know how to say that? So that's not wedding. So if I get down on my knee and I ask uh, my girlfriend for her hand in marriage, uh, how would you say that in English? It starts with a P, PR. So it's a surprise. That would be a really easy one. It's not, um, Paula, engagement is what happens after. Uh, Rehen, that's right. It's a surprise proposal. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so a surprise uh, proposal, Enga you're engaged after, so the engagement, en you could say surprise engagement party, maybe, uh, but proposal is more accurate, so it's a surprise proposal, you propose marriage, okay, um, surprise graduation or graduation party, uh, I'd stay away from that one. I mean, people usually know when they're graduating. Uh, the parties are usually planned. It's kind of awkward to surprise someone. Uh, but you could. You could surprise a person for their graduation. You could show up. Okay, sure. So we have some good ones now. Uh, again, you only need to think of two or three. Um, in class, I'm always showing you more just so you realize that there's usually a lot more than two or three. So for these part two questions... Uh, in most cases, there are going to be five or six really good ideas that you can think of. You really only need two, three of them, and then choose the best one. So uh, which one of these do you think is the best? And again, choose wisely. So do you think it's a surprise visit, just generally speaking, uh, surprising someone at their wedding, uh, a surprise birthday party, a surprise anniversary, or a surprise proposal? Which one of these do you think would be your best choice to answer for uh, the uh, examiner? For Dobbs uh, says maybe wedding or a birthday. Uh, Paula says birthday. Hong says anniversary. Um, or <laughs> Vish says surprise visit. Uh, okay, so we have quite a variance there. And that's not a surprise for me. Um, I think all of those are good. So I think a birthday party, wedding, anniversary, or even a surprise visit could be uh, quite good. Um, it also depends on where you are in life. If you are married, um, then definitely a surprise proposal uh, would be a very good one, telling the story of how um, you surprise the other person. You could even do it as a woman. You could. It's a modern world. You could say you propose to your uh, husband. So, um, all right. Um, Rahul says, what if she says no? It would be even more suspenseful. Uh, yes, Rahul, but let's not jump ahead of the game. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, hopefully that hasn't happened to anybody. That would be a real disappointment. Okay. Um, so for our class, the one that I think suits everybody is a surprise birthday party. Okay. So, Let's go with that one. It's the easiest one to make up information. So we're going to choose surprise birthday party. Okay, now before I start really getting creative, uh, what should I think about for surprise birthday party? So what would be my next step? Again, I'm developing logic here so that I can put together a well-structured, high-level complex, clear response to get a good score. So what would, uh, so I figured, okay, surprise birthday party will work well, especially for all of us, because of course that's uh, a topic that no matter uh, who you are, you should be able to talk about. Yeah, so Vish, yeah, that's very good. Um, so Vish said, well, we need to figure out who, who should it be for, okay? Um, so who is a good person to choose? Who would be a good person to choose the surprise birthday party for? 
do you think that would be easy to talk about? And then we can think about planning. Um, so Vish says my spouse or my partner. Yeah. So a boyfriend, girlfriend could be a good one as well. Mom, um, Patricio says friend. I would agree with Patricio on this one. I think the easiest one to go with is my best friend. Uh, now that could be your partner as well, of course. So All right. Perfect. So now we can get into some details um, and we can talk about where, when, who, why. Uh, we'll do that together in a minute. Um, but uh, here you can, so you would take notes, okay? So your notes would be like uh, at our house, okay, uh, on Saturday, uh, over a dozen friends, decorations, and cake. So just bear with me here, students. I'm just showing you like if I am in the IELTS and I have uh, the one minute to prepare, then uh, I go through, okay, this is an event. I have to talk about where it happened, when it happened, who was there, the activities that happened, the reason for it. I think about, okay, wedding anniversary, um, maybe a proposal, okay, bir surprise birthday party, that one will work really well. Who was it for? All right, my best friend, where? At my house, okay. Um, and then I start taking some notes on Saturday over a dozen friends, decorations and cake, loud noise, um, music, dancing, games, Okay, so I'm thinking of all of these points very quickly. It's an event. It's easy to think about. I'm moving along nicely. Bear with me here. And then what's the last thing that I write? So what is my last? So I realize, okay, I spent about 40 seconds, 45 seconds until this point. I have about 15, maybe 20 seconds remaining before the examiner says, okay, you're one minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking. So what do I need before that happens? Very good, Paula. Very good, Patricio. Very good, uh, Amrit. Um, think about your first sentence, okay? So very, very important. Have that first sentence ready. It's, it's absolutely key. So just that one tip, members, can increase your band score by half a band for your speaking. Uh, because it helps you to focus, it helps you to stay on topic, it helps you to be specific and not just general, okay? So give me the first sentence. So what would be a good way to start this first sentence for this, okay? So it's a surprise birthday party. Again, when you write that first sentence, look at the card, talk about a time, you surprised another person, okay? Again, make sure that that first sentence is clear and without any mistakes. So it's fluent, it's accurate, it's natural, it's coherent, and it answers the question specifically. Please, please, please do not start by saying, I have surprised many people. One particular incident that I remember, it's kind of like, really, you surprised a lot of people? <laughs> okay. So Amrit says, I gave the biggest surprise to my friend John on his 17th birthday. Uh, Amrit, that's a great start. It's a really good start. So I gave the biggest surprise to my friend John on his 17th birthday. It's brilliant. It, you, you're right away giving me just such valuable information that as an examiner, I'm just checking off all the boxes, clearly understood the question, able to generate accurate ideas, using good grammar, expresses himself with detail. So all of those check boxes I have on my marking sheet that help you to get your band score, Amrit, you're hitting all of them with that sentence, okay? Paula, same thing. Last year, I planned an amazing surprise birthday party. So Paula, don't forget the word surprise. Just throw it in there between amazing and birthday. So last year, I planned an amazing surprise birthday party for my best friend, Sam. Okay, 
then it's brilliant. Very important, that word surprise in this uh, case. Uh, Vish says, it was my best friend's birthday on the 25th of September when I decided to throw the ultimate surprise party. Vish, when I decided to throw the ultimate surprise party. Okay, throw that in there. The surprise is, it's the essence of this question. So make sure it's there. Okay. Rahul says, I planned a surprise event for my spouse on her 22nd birthday after our marriage. Uh, Rahul, that's good. Just notice those corrections, but it's very good that you have the word surprise in there. Yeah, absolutely. After our marriage, it's a little bit awkward, Rahul. It's kind of like you're mixing another event in with it. I don't know if I do that, but um, just be careful. Okay. Uh, if I had to choose, and this is, you know, it's not to create competition, uh, but the best answer out of the ones that I see so far is Amrit. Amrit has the highest band level answer. It's most accurate to what the question is asking. Okay. Okay, so that would be my first sentence there. I organized the biggest surprise, I don't know what it says, form, uh, party. There. Um, I organized the biggest surprise for my, for my best friend. Uh, John for his 17th birthday. So again, one more time, students. And repeat, uh, viewers, students, members, repeat. This is a speaking class. So make sure to repeat such sentences. I organized the biggest surprise for my best friend John for his 17th birthday. Okay, that will work. Okay. Uh, Patricio says, I remember when I surprised my best friend Aldo, uh, I organized a big party for his 18th birthday. Perfect. Patricio, that works well. Also, just the second half of that sentence. Pay attention to that. Okay. All right. So now I have that first sentence, and that will allow me to be focused and create some great uh, fluency once the examiner says, Okay, your two minutes is up. Please begin speaking. And then right away, you say, I organized the biggest surprise for my best friend John for his 17th birthday. All right. So uh, how should I continue? What would be, there's different ways, okay? It's not, there's, it's not just one way um, to do this. Uh, but again, you want to have some good uh, structure, okay? So when you're creating structure, you need to create context. By context, we mean that you should think about time, location, and people before you start talking about activities, uh, reasons, and feelings, okay? So Vish said, there were many people involved to make the surprise party uh, successful. Okay. Um, even before people, Vish, uh, it's, it's okay, Vish, you could start with people. But even before that, I would probably give it location and time. Okay. Location and time, I think, makes sense to, uh, to explain or express before you get into the people at the party. So focus on location and time, okay? Why? Because you're creating an image, uh, Vish. So you want to create an image in your audience mind. Uh, so you want them to kind of see the place uh, where this party is happening. Um, just think about it, uh, members, like um, you're building a movie set, 
right? So we have the title of the movie. It's a surprise party for your best friend, John. Now we need the uh, actual location, right? So we need the uh, place with the windows and what it looked like. Okay, we need the time. So summer, okay, sunshine, right? And then you start to put the people into the party. And then you start to put the activities into the party, like listening to uh, music, okay? It's an old ghetto blaster. I'm old school. Um, all right, so you want to build it in that kind of logic. If you talk about the people first, what happens is you are challenging your listener to build the scene awkwardly. So if you talk about people first, Vish, then basically you have people, right? But you don't have the location yet. You don't have the time. So if I now say the location, then I have to put the people suddenly into that location. It's a little bit more difficult to do it that way. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay. Um, so Rahul says, I plan the birthday party at my house um, because she comes home after work uh, with a couple of mutual friends, um, having a big cake, lighting effect, and different colors of balloons. Okay, Rahul, uh, you have some great ideas with the balloons, the lighting at your house. You have to say that in a few more sentences. So I think you're trying to put too much information into one long sentence, uh, but it's the correct approach. Uh, Amrit says the party was at his house in Brampton in the evening. Okay, good. Excellent, Amrit. So you're, you're giving it that context. Fantastic. Uh, Vish says it was held at my home on the 24th of December at midnight uh, where other friends brought him without uh, giving away the surprise. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Haung says the surprise party was at his office. Uh, when he got back after work in the evening. Okay. Um, when he went back to work in the evening, I think, Haung, is what you want to say. All right. Yeah. So those are all possible ways uh, to uh, continue. And you've got the right idea now. Indicate the reason, right, why you chose that location. So, um, I organized the biggest surprise for my best friend, John, for his 17th birthday. Uh, I set up the party at his apartment with some friends. Uh, we decorated the place with balloons and banners. The reason I decided on his flat was so that he wouldn't suspect the surprise. Okay, so when you discuss the location, it's a good idea to quickly include why that location. So why did you choose his apartment or why did you choose their workplace, right? So again, follow up on your ideas, right? Uh, Ferdov says the surprise party was in New York City during our holidays in July. Ferdov, sure, that works as well, okay? Uh, why was it in New York City? Right? Why was that the location? So give me that information. Okay. My friend is born uh, July 14th. So we had the party that week on Saturday 
which was the 18th, if I remember correctly. Okay. All right. Um, and again, use some natural language. So get used to and get familiar with these kinds of expressions like, if I remember correctly. Uh, native English speakers commonly use these types of fillers, these expressions. Okay. So again, repeat, I organized the biggest surprise for my best friend John for his 17th birthday. I set up the party at his apartment with some friends. We decorated the place with balloons and banners. The reason I decided on his flat was so that he wouldn't suspect the surprise. My friend is born July 14th, so we had the party that week on Saturday, which was the 18th, if I remember correctly. All right. Um, fantastic. Uh, what do I do now? So I have the context. It's his apartment. We have the time. It's July 18th, roughly. Um, what do I do now? Okay, while you're thinking about that, I'll read some of the uh, suggestions. Uh, Rahul says, I chose this location because it was easier uh, to decorate the houses in such short time and arrange all the facilities with the help of nearby local vendors uh, and mom and pop shops. Sure, Rahul, that works. Okay. Uh, Paula says, my flat was the perfect place because it was not only big enough for all the attendees, but also because my friends would never expect a birthday party there. Uh, Paula, really good. I like how you're remembering to use the, um, uh, the correlative conjunction, not only, but also. Um, Reid, I guess you're asking about um, the um, present tense use in that sentence. It's because I'm generalizing. You could say my friend was born on July 14th. Uh, in this case, my friend is born July 14th. It's just a general statement. It's le less usual, but it's still okay. Yeah. But good eye, Amrit. Um, you could say my friend was born July 14th. That'll work also. I'm saying is born because it was this past July 14th, so it's generalizing, right? Birthday is on the 14th, 14th of every year. You get why the present tense can be used there? It's a good question. All right, um, so uh, Paula says, I'd look at the card, and Rahul agrees. Rahul says, yeah, let's look at the questions uh, before we get too carried away. So absolutely. So we look at the card, who it was. Okay, we said it was my best friend. Um, now we might want to say a little bit more information about that. So uh, what could I say? So we talked about where it happened. We talked about who it was. Why did we surprise them? That's one that we haven't really talked about. So definitely a good idea to uh, think about the question here. So why did you surprise them? What would be a good reason to surprise your best friend? Okay, so you have to think quickly here. And this is uh, definitely an idea that you want to develop in your one minute preparation time if you can. So why did you surprise your best friend? What was your reason? Come up with something clever, think outside the box. Okay, so Amrit says, didn't see him for the last three years. Amrit, you definitely want to use present perfect for that. Haven't seen him for three years, okay? Haven't, so have not Use present perfect. Uh, Paula says, because she did not want to celebrate. Uh, Rehan says, for a special treat to make them feel special. Okay, uh, Vish says it was the 18th birthday, so it was to celebrate um, becoming an adult from a teenager. Paula says because they deserve it. Sure, okay, one that comes to mind for me is maybe because they're going away for university or college and you want them to know that they're very special in your life, okay? So write some sentences, students. Uh, create full sentences and uh, we'll compare. Okay, I'll write a sentence. You write your sentences. It can be different kinds of information. 
So All right. Rahul says, because I love her and it's my moral duty to keep her happy. So I surprised her on her birthday. She was dazzled and full of emotions. Uh, Rahul, that's really nice. Okay. That's very good expression. That's really, really uh, good. Um, really good set of ideas. You've done a great job there. Amrit says he was graduating high school and it w I wouldn't have the chance to see him for the next four years as he was going away for his uh, bachelor's uh, at a uh, university far away. Sure. Uh, you can be a little bit more specific. Um, you can say uh, in the U.S. or in France. So just name a country. Going away for university abroad in Germany. Okay, and then we go, oh, okay, so you're not going to see them. Uh, Ferdov says, my friend didn't plan to celebrate his birthday uh, because he was far from his family. So I wanted to surprise him and make it special. Yeah, don't be shy to use that word, special. Uh, for doves, that's good. I would f definitely finish that up a little bit more with some sentences, okay? But otherwise, it's good. All right, um, this is what I have here. Uh, repeat with me or read with me the reason... I decided on his flat was so that he wouldn't suspect the surprise. Uh, my friend, okay, the, sorry, from here. Okay, one more time. The reason for the party was to make John feel special. I wanted him to know that he is my best friend forever, no matter what. And since he was moving away that summer for college study in another city, I really wanted to make a lasting impression on him so that he knows he is loved by his friends and family back home. Okay, uh, a couple of new expressions maybe for some of our viewers. Lasting impression. Impression means that you create um, an idea or a situation uh, which the person remembers and lasting means for a long time. Okay. Uh, Paula, um, it's uh, the future as seen from the past, the grammar that you have to use there. So it's, I knew that she would feel special and loved uh, it, because of the party. Okay. So Paula says, I wanted to surprise her because she was going to London next year for her engineering degree. So we would probably be far away from each other for a long time. I knew that she would feel special and loved. Uh, being celebrated at the party. Uh, Paula, very good. Yeah, uh, Paula, check out that grammar that I just mentioned. So f it's called future as seen from the past. Future as seen from the past. They would do this, okay? Uh, Patricio says, I decided to organize this party because some days before my best friend lost his job and he didn't have any money. He was down on his luck, a little bit depressed, had uh, not too much food or decoration. Uh, very good, Patricio, I like your approach as well. So you wanna cheer your friend up. Patricio, it's cheer up my friend, okay? Give you a couple of uh, side notes there, Patricio, some good language for future. So my friend lost his job 
and he was down on his luck. So what better way to cheer him up than with a surprise party for his birthday with all of his friends? Okay, um, so that's a nice way to express what you're saying there, uh, Patricio. So my friend lost his job and he was down on his luck. So what better way to cheer him up than with a surprise party for his birthday with all of his friends? Okay, all right, uh, good. So we're doing a great job. We're moving along. Um, obviously, we still have a fair bit of time. We're probably only about 35, 40 seconds in. Uh, so what should I do now? So I've talked about who it was, where it was, why I surprised them. If I have to uh, look at the card again, how did they feel about it? It's my next question. Oh, how did they feel about it? Definitely want to answer that. Okay. So what are some good words? What's some good vocabulary to use for how they felt about it? Yeah, definitely, Amrit. Quick glance at the cue card. I'm really happy, members, that you're remembering the points I'm instructing in uh, your previous classes because really these will help you to construct much better responses in your uh, part two. So many IELTS candidates uh, look at the card, write down notes, and then in the two-minute speaking time, they look at the examiner, they look at their hands, they look at the ceiling, <laughs> and they just don't look at the card or at their notes. And it's just so frustrating to see that um, as, a, as an examiner. Okay, uh, so uh, Ferdab says the word delighted. Um, Paula says thankful, grateful, pleasant. Paula says excited. Uh, Amrit says, on cloud nine. Yes, Amrit, you can use an idiom as long as you use it correctly. Careful. Uh, most of the time, students use idioms incorrectly in the IELTS exam. So just be very careful, Amrit. Uh, he was on cloud nine. Yeah, you can use that. Okay, um, what's the first reaction? So you walk into the room. And everybody jumps out from their hiding place and screams, surprise. Now, because the card is asking us about that, I would definitely put that in. Okay. So, when he opened the door to his flat and everyone jumped out from their hiding places and screamed, surprise! At first, John was what? What would be the word that comes after? So John opens the door to his flat. Everyone jumps out from their hiding places, right? For me, that's easy. Wow, there I am. Um, surprise. So what are you first? Uh, yeah, so Amrit says scared. Um, the better word is uh, for Dobbs and Paula, shocked. So he was shocked, right? At first he was shocked. So at first John was shocked. But soon... His pale face filled with color. His cheeks became rosy and he had a smile ear to ear. That's some nice English expression for you there, okay? So at first John was shocked, but soon his pale face filled with color or the color returned to his pale face. His cheeks became rosy and he had a smile ear to ear. Okay. All right. 
The party went all night long with music, dancing, games, and chit chat. Okay, so again, don't forget those actions. It's important to include actions when you're talking about an event. Um, everyone had a great time. And John left to college filled with love and happy memories. Okay. All right. So, um, students, uh, now I can look at the card again, make sure that I've answered all of the questions. Okay. So who it was? Yes. Talked about it. My best friend, John, where did it happen? Yes. Talked about it. His flat. Why did you surprise them? Yes. Talked about that. He's going away for college. How did they feel about it? They were shocked. Then they were really happy. So we talked about that. Now, uh, we have our full response. It's probably about 80 to 90 seconds long. We'll go through it in just a minute. And then if you still have time, if you still have 30, 40 more seconds, you could talk more. All you need to do is expand. Okay. What's really important, and this is quite an important strategy these days with so many students taking the IELTS exam, you should uh, focus to answer all of the questions on the cue card in the first 70 to 80 seconds. The reason for that is because examiners don't always let students talk for full two minutes. In fact, oftentimes the examiners will stop students before the two minute mark. So it's quite important. It's very important that you answer all of the questions on the card and then you can still speak more if the examiner is just kind of looking at you like, Hey, I'm really enjoying your story. Just keep going. Um, then keep going. You can say that, uh, in fact, uh, the following, um, December when I thought John was away for his studies in, uh, Paris, uh, he, uh, surprised me with a visit. So because of this birthday party, he felt that he should do something special for my birthday also. So you can keep going, you can keep expanding, but it's really important that you answer all the questions on the card in the first 70, 80 seconds. Okay. All right. Paula says, I can still remember her face when she opened the door and saw everybody there. She was shocked at first. Then she started to cry and laugh. Happiness, uh, happiness, uh, happiness was radiating, uh, from her face. And, uh, she thanked us all night for this wonderful gift. Okay, good. Uh, Ferdov says he was not only delighted, but also shocked for the first few seconds. All right. Okay, students, so um, let's read this together. Let's say it nice and loud. Um, I organized the biggest surprise party for my best friend John for his 17th birthday. I set up the party at his apartment with some friends. We decorated the place with balloons and banners. Uh, the reason I decided on his flat was so that he wouldn't suspect the surprise. My friend was born July 14th, so we had the party that week on Saturday, which I think was the 18th, if I remember correctly. The reason for the party was to make John feel special. I wanted him to know that he's my BFF no matter what. And since he was moving away that summer for college study in another city, I really wanted to make a lasting impression on him so that he knows he is loved by his friends and his family back home. So when he opened the door to his flat and everybody jumped out from their hiding places and screamed, surprise, at first John was shocked, but soon his pale face filled with color, his cheeks became rosy, and he had a smile ear to ear. The party went all night long with music, dancing, games, and chit-chat. Everybody had a great time, and John left to college filled with love 
and lots of happy uh, memories. Okay. Rahul says she was not only smiling, but she hugged me for a couple of minutes. Other friends were yelling at us uh, to kiss her. Then we kissed. I also became emotional. Rahul, it's fantastic. I think you're kind of reliving a surprise party through this IELTS class, which is great. Um, and uh, a really good job for Dov's uh, Paula uh, Amrit, fantastic contributions today. Uh, keep up the good studies, students. Again, remember, go through this several times, practicing part two at home. Uh, remember that tip that I gave you at the beginning of class? Uh, check to see if there is a Toastmasters club near you. Oftentimes, there are Toastmasters clubs in English in other countries. So check that out. Um, and uh, in 30 minutes, for everybody who's watching, we will have a uh, reading class for uh, academic IELTS. It's also good for general. Um, so hopefully I will see most of you or all of you in that class. Again, uh, check us out on our websites. Join us, aehelp.com for academic G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for general. These websites look like this. This one's the general. Click that red button to join. Or for academic, it's the blue background. Click that red button to join. Thanks so much, everyone. See you in a few minutes. Bye for now.